This episode is brought to you by Snacks. Yes, naturebox.com. No, dot com. Got it. Uh, what is Naturebox? Great question, Jake. Uh, you know when you get hungry in between meals? No. So, like, you'll have uh, unhealthy snacks like potato-based chips or tortilla-based chips. Tortilla chips? Yeah, like a tortilla strip or a bowl or a dip and dot. I've often had a bowl, mm-hmm. yeah. So this is what Nature Box does is say, enough with that. We're going to send you nutritious and delicious snacks to you. You don't even have to pay for shipping. Very nice. So how does it work? If you go to naturebox.com slash if I were you, they're so confident you'll like their snacks. They'll send you free samples. There's a website out there right now that if you give them your address, they'll give you free snacks. Sounds pretty trill to me. Not only that, but they support our show. So you can support our show as well. If you go to naturebox.com slash if I were you, you sign up for the free sampler. They're so convinced you'll like their shit that they're going to give you a little bit for free, and then you'll come back and hopefully, hopefully, ideally, pay just $20 a month, and they'll send you five of their delicious snacks in the mail. I truly do think that everybody wins, especially these people who ordered Nature Box and forwarded us their receipts so we can publicly thank them for... Shame them. Thank them, oh, not thank shame them. Yeah, yes. for being so cool, supportive, and healthy. Way to turn your lives around. Chris H. Garrett D. Helen L. Mikey F. Ryan L. Laura D. And Mitch M. They're probably enjoying white cheddar and caramel corn at this moment. I think so. Either that or the sriracha cashews. The blueberry almonds or the dark chocolate nom noms. They're all good. Check them out. Go to naturebox.com slash if I were you. Uh, this episode was recorded before... We left for Australia, but we're recording this ad while we're in Australia. We're in Melbourne right now. That's pretty weird. And we're going to Adelaide tomorrow. Tickets are still available. We'll be there. Streeter will be there. It's going to be a fun, fun time. Let's get this episode started right now. Things got real by... At least to our chill, they're nearly freezing. And we almost don't care. Cause the cheese that they be seasoning In that regard they're beasting Oh, you better shape up Because you need advice There's something you they won't think twice So mom, turn it down Because it's getting absurd not quite sure how herpes works, but that's okay, cause Jake's SCD free, at least that's what he claims, I'm not really sure, well here's what I would do, with Jake and Amir, if I were you, well this is what they would do, with Vance and the Pinch, if they were you, at gmail.com. To do you have it game whoa wow i love that <laughs> do you know what that was a parody of uh fuck me it's so familiar but no you better shape up oh wow because i need a man i really love that <laughs> start to finish i love that one <laughs> what do you think Blumenfeld? <laughs> you seem preoccupied <laughs> way preoccupied right now i am pouring us Two little glasses of whiskey. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's weird. I've never seen you this happy before. <laughs> you, when, when you hold the, 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 the whiskey in your hand, you, you, you cheer I love up. It. I, <laughs> I love to drink. I absolutely do. I like the way it tastes, <laughs> and I like the way it makes me feel. <laughs> okay. Cheers. All right. I might not get around to having a sip just quite That's yet. That's cool. I'll have yours. <laughs> I don't want you to have mine. I, I do. I, I, I'm <laughs> chugging the bottle. Here okay. we go. Jeez. I said, hey, we should record. You said, let's have one where we're drinking. I'm like, I don't know. I feel weird. It's only it's 2 in the afternoon. And then you're like, hey, I'm already a bit buzzed. <laughs> yeah. And then I also did an upper and a downer, mm-hmm. so I'm even keel. <laughs> you said, watch me do a medium or right now. Uh, just joking. It's Saturday. It's Saturday night. So this is sort of our, like... Uh, this is how nerds get ready to go out. <laughs> they 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 drink and then they record and then the, they they hit the town. <laughs> I actually might go out alone. <laughs> all right, that's all right too. Hell, uh, I don't even know if a lot of the bars will let me in. I don't have my ID. I do not have my passport. 
What I do have is my Israeli passport, and it is expired. And it just says Shmuel. <laughs> that's right. And it says it in Hebrew, big block, Hebrew letters. Uh, but that's, that's what I'm going to go for tonight. I like the way whiskey tastes. In addition to how it makes you drunk? Yeah, I like to be drunk. Because when I'm drunk, I feel confident. Yeah. Oh, and you can't feel that way without? Yeah. Well, sometimes, like, if I'm in a bad mood and I drink, then I'll feel better. And then if I'm in a happy mood and I drink to celebrate, then I also feel even better. So it always makes you feel better? Yeah. There's really no downside to it. (laughs) Cut to tomorrow. (laughs) I have a picture of you. When I say hungover, what's, like, a good example of how hungover you've been? Because I have a mental image right now. Uh, Was it... Uh, in Silver Lake throwing up on the porch. No, but that's good, too. Uh, I was imagining you in the bathtub with uh, a damp towel over your head and, like, the shower coming down on you with, like, lukewarm water. Yeah. was That that was the same night. Oh, was it? Because that was the day that you and Marty went to the <laughs> hotel, and I was going to come, and then I was like, actually, I don't think I can go. <laughs> and then you guys were just, like, standing in the front of the house as I was puking over the, oh, the balcony. <laughs> So yeah, there is a negative. There's an equal but opposite reaction. Right. How else do you get confidence if not through drinking? Um, new haircuts. Which That's we did right. Today. Yeah, we got two. We got matching haircuts today. We yeah, we kind of did. <laughs> but uh, we were trying to psych ourselves up before we got it as to like how short we would allow the sides to be. He, we were just like, I think I'm going to go three. Like, I think we can go shorter than that. Like, wow, really shorter than a three? It's scary. It is scary, even though it's it's the difference is eighths of millimeters. Yeah. So there, you can't really tell. Uh, I ended up getting a one and a half. And I got a zero over the whole thing. <laughs> you, got, you look like Mr. Clean. <laughs> But you look so you look a lot better now than you did. I mean, the before and after pictures are startling. Yeah, my hair was too long and it was very ugly. Yeah, it was like ratty and dry towards the ends of it because that was hair that's been around since uh, m- like February. Yeah, we filmed. It was pre when we were filming the last episodes of Jake and Amir. Right. So basically, <laughs> somebody could watch an early video when I got a haircut, and that was the last time it was. It looked like Woody um, Allen, Annie Hall, year. like Annie Hall, Woody Allen haircut, where it's like a little bit on top and then Oompa Loompa also off to the sides. Yeah. <clears throat> Why did it take you so long to get a haircut? Uh, I really don't. I think because I like extremes. Oh. I like when my beard gets really, really long, and then I like will shave it with a straight razor. Right. I just like big transformations. So yeah. I think that's probably part of it. But I also I wanted to just see how long I could grow my hair. I like doing many things at once. Like I'm not going to shave or cut my hair until I feel healthy. So like if I have a cold, I'm going to let myself get ugly and bad. Yeah. And then once I'm feeling good again, I will like trim and get a haircut that's and nice. buy a new shirt. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Never, sometimes I'll like buy a pair of shorts or something and i'll be like i'll wear i remember actually i bought a shirt and i didn't wear it until i i was like i'm not gonna wear this shirt till i get a (laughs) six-pack you still it's still hanging in your closet i saw it it took i think six years and i only had a six-pack for uh (laughs) two months is it a six-pack if you flex or it has to be like a non-flexing six-pack i don't know i guess i don't know what i feel like I feel like if you can flex and have a six-pack, that's pretty good. That's a six-pack. Can I show you what I have, and you can tell me if you think that's a six-pack? Yeah. All right. I'm going to stand up away from the microphone. Oh, my God. You're covered in boils. Yeah. I for sure, I certainly call that a six-pack. So I can say I have a six-pack? Yeah. <coughs> I have one, then. <laughs> you finally have a six-pack. <laughs> have you been working out a lot? Uh, I've been working out the same amount that I usually do. Dieting? Uh, yeah, you know, my diet is like, uh... I guess you've slowly been... I mean, you've had that for a a while. Yeah. I basically don't... I try not to eat a lot of bread. I usually get the healthy... The most delicious healthy option. Right. So, like, I'll have, like, a veggie burger instead of a cheeseburger. That's nice. And I'll have sweet potato fries instead of regular fries. (laughs) I don't want to get drunk with you anymore. (laughs) Tonight or ever. This is If I Were You, the only advice podcast on the internet hosted by us. I'm Amir. I'm Jake. Uh, I was wondering how long it was going to take. I know. I think that might be a record. Uh, I didn't mind it. I have a six pack. Um, All right. So what is this show? Really cool. (laughs) 
<laughs> for real, by the way. Uh, this is an advice podcast. People are in desperate need of our advice. What do you so, feel like you need to work out now that your six pack is finished? Oh, like what's my next thing that what's I... What's your should... next fitness goal? Mm, good question. I think, uh, I think I still have like chub that I can get rid of. If like, I'm not willing, I'm only willing to go 90% health. Right. Like I will get a wrap and like mashed potatoes, but I'm not willing to like eat a salad for every single meal. Right. And that's like what it takes to get like legit or lean. work out twice as hard as you do. Like yeah, right yeah, now yeah. you take a three mile run and you could take a, a six, six mile, mile run, run. Or, or you could do like interval training with sprints and stuff. Mm -hmm. That would just, it's like, which, which direction are you trying to, uh, right. Or like sometimes I'll do push ups and sometimes I won't. Sometimes I'll do a six minute ab exercise and sometimes I won't. Yeah. But if I did something like literally every day and then didn't eat any bread at all, I feel like the change would be marginal, but the change in effort would be so uh, monumental that it wouldn't be worth the, mo the marginal change. You, but like it, that's the difference between having like, I don't know. I feel like you would, f maybe it would look marginal, but you would feel a lot better. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know to, like, if I put would it in though. math terms. I think I would be like a fucking lot better. If I didn't eat cookies, I think I'd be in French fries. I think I'd be sadder than the happiness I would gain by looking slightly better. Yeah. So it's like a give and take. I'm not trying to like, I don't want to deprive myself of everything because then I wouldn't be happy enough when I do achieve those things that I want to achieve. <clears throat> um, what else was I going to say? Uh, working out, uh, fitness goal, running, happiness, sweet potato fries. <laughs> I'm always just thinking of sweet potato fries. All right. Maybe it'll come to me. Okay. Uh, let's try to answer a question. These are real people seeking our advice for whatever reason. Uh, so here we go. Uh, do you have a fake name to give this guy? Uh, tile. That's a good fake name. Thank you. So. Quite a while ago, I was tending bar, and a girl gave me her number. We texted for a while, and all was going quite well. We made plans to meet up one weekend, but my mom asked me to go to a concert with her, and I couldn't say no. So I told the girl who had given me her number that the situation had come up, and I had to cancel. We haven't talked since. Meanwhile, I started dating someone else, but that ship has docked. Is there any hope of rekindling the interest of the enthusiastic bar patron who thought that I was attractive enough to engage with? Or has that ship set sail forever? Love, Tile. Basically, is there a statute of limitations? Someone gives you their number, and if you don't do anything about it, and let's say this relationship lasts six months, is that too late? I don't think it's ever too late. Ever, ever? Because it's so fun and flirtatious to be like, here's my number, use it if you want, and then like... That's, you know, that's sort of like a microburst of energy. You're like, oh, fuck yeah, like I got a number. Yeah. So that's one instance of fun, excitement, <clears throat> out of nowhere. This is cool, unexpected, wasn't planning for this, hooray. And then fizzles, whatever. But does it fizzle down to zero? Is the ember I think it's gone? Fine it does fizz I think it does, of course, fizzle down to zero. But it's not like he blew it so hard that it's the door can't be open again. I feel like you can always peek in if it's that casual and lighthearted initially. Mm. He could of course just be like, Hey, it's me again. Is the like, spark still there by any chance? Right. Except not that fucking lame, but no. Yeah, <laughs> of course. I would say, is the spark there perchance? Oh, that's fucking <laughs> hot. What do you text someone that you haven't spoken to in a year that gave you their number a year ago? Um, I would probably just say, hey, exclamation point, what about that drink, question mark? And they'll be like, who is this? Yeah, that's a risk that you run. But, like, the stakes are so low. If she says, who is that? I think that's the real question. Like, if, if you do something like that and they say, who is this, do you even <laughs> respond? <laughs> so you're like, yeah, total. You can go for it. It's only been a year. If they say, who is this? I think I'm gone forever again. Maybe. A year break, I say, hey, let's get a drink. They say, who is this? And I block their number. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a slap in the face. It's just a stonewall that I'm not even willing to entertain the notion well, of climbing the, like, over there's it. There's no more f fun, flirty, <laughs> like, there's no fun, flirty way to explain your name to someone. Like, hey, hey, uh, let's, 
how about that drink after all? It's like kind of funny to say that after six right. months. And they say, who is this? And then you just have to be like Amir Shmuel Blumenfeld. <laughs> oh, so you're saying I can't say my name because my name no, sounds like, I don't know what I would – if I said, hey, let's get that drink. She says, who is this? Um, I guess I would probably say like, oh, no, monkey covering his eyes emoji. <laughs> uh-huh. Then my name. Uh, or I would say – <laughs> this is tough. I would say I would say my name and then like another message that said I should have known you'd give you'd have given up on me by now. Or oh, something like that. Like make it sound overly dramatic. Yeah, and like that you don't blame her for deleting your number or whatever. I snoozed and I lost. I snozzed and I lost. Yeah. And I deserve to I be I feel like tossed. that's an example of something that's funny to me, but mm-hmm. if you said that to a girl, she would be like <laughs> that's bad. Do you ever just go for it? Like, this is crazy and kind of weird, but uh, if you don't get this, then maybe we're not meant to be. Sometimes or do you always do. err on the side of Kosh? I probably mostly err on the side of Kosh. Sometimes I'll go, I'll take, like, I'll do something very sarcastic and hope that they get it. But I think also sarcasm is something that you, one, have to, like, see me in person and know that I'm sarcastic. Right. It's so hard I, to translate over text. Yeah, at least initially. I, I, it's not that I wouldn't trust anybody to not get my sense of humor. I would just be like, you have to build towards it. So it's like a slow ramp up. Uh, so with this guy, you can rekindle. Hey, how about that drink? Or but Although the last text message between the two would be like... Uh, <coughs> Uh, hey, sorry, I have to cancel. Uh, That's funny. If you're well, but you can't go off that because if she doesn't have that thread anymore, then it would make no sense at all. Mm. But don't you sometimes like to uh, reference the thread, like uh, something? Let's say, hey, sorry, I can't make it tonight. I'm going to a concert with my mom. She says, no worries. And then six months later, isn't it sometimes funny to be like, hey, the concert just ended. Yeah. Hey, longest concert ever. Yeah, what are you yeah, up yeah. to tonight? Like make a joke about that. I do. I guess if it's something that memorable, like, hey, I can't see you. I'm going to a concert with my... I, I think it, only if it's memorable. I think if you're going solely on the last message, it's a little dangerous because not everybody saves their texts. Doesn't it? Isn't it always saving automatically? It does save automatically, but I sometimes delete them. So basically he can text. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. The, there is no statute of limitations. Um, all right. We need yet another name of a man. You come up with it. It has to be a fake name. Yeah. Ring. Ring. <laughs> ring. Ring. Tile and ring. <laughs> That's our names tonight when we go out. Oh, my God. Hey, what's up? I'm Tile. We don't need games to make me more self-aware and self-conscious around people. I already feel weird when I go out. You don't I, have to say, oh, we're so hot and handsome that, like, let's do this thing where you have to introduce yourself as a weird thing. Like, let's make this game a little more challenging. It's, it's already hard it's enough for me to talk. It's challenging. It's fun to do that. It's not fun to say, hey, my name is Ring. I'm going to introduce you to that as Ring. <laughs> I'll introduce myself as Jake, and then I'll say, this is my friend Ring. This is my friend Ring. Yeah. And they'll say, what? <laughs> yeah, that's right. His parents liked rings. <laughs> ring writes, been a long-time listener. Ooh, sorry. Ving Rames' name is Ving. You know? <laughs> Actually, his legal name is Ring Vames. No shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's a spoonerism. Okay, here we go. Ving, sorry. Ring Vites. No. E Vites. No. Ring Rites. You've had one sip of whiskey. <laughs> and I'm already and done. And I love it. Uh, I don't need to go out. I'm already there. <laughs> Ring writes, basically, me and my friends have been lacking some female affection recently. Don't get me wrong, we aren't ugly or anything. It's just that we've taken a back seat from the lady scene as of late. Anyway, trying to create some kind of bridge with another group of girls, I started messaging this girl I used to know from back in the day. She's chill, a solid 8.5 out of 10. But here's where the problem begins. She's part of a relatively attractive group of girls, a couple dimes among them, one of whom is her best friend. So I've been messaging this 8.5 for weeks now, and I'm starting to really like her. I've invited her and her friends to a party that's coming up so that my friends and her friends can mingle. But about a week ago, bear in mind, this is two weeks before the party, the 8.5's best friend, one of the dimes, started messaging me. 
She's been very flirtatious and even sends me pics of her looking hot in a bikini asking me what I think of her. I haven't even met the girls yet, and I'm torn between the two of them. So please, guys, I need your help. Do I carry on trying to progress things with the eight and a half? Or do I embrace the tens flirting? Or a third option, do I wait till I meet them both at a party and let th- let things sort out themselves? Thanks, love ring. I like that he needed to say, don't get me wrong, we aren't <laughs> ugly. He needed you and I to know he wasn't. Have we ever just made fun of somebody on this podcast because we thought they were ugly? Yeah, probably. On the on the outside? <laughs> on the, yes. Only on the inside. We make fun uh, of people all the time for being ugly on the inside. You also, you don't have to tell us that you've been lacking in some female affection recently. Your neuroses speak so so many volumes that we know, we know that this is a very precious and exciting moment <laughs> for you. As you invited someone to a party three weeks in advance, and you're freaking out two weeks in advance as to which hot girl you should bone. <laughs> Should I go yeah. for the eight and five? Eight point five? I don't know. Things are looking really good, but there is a ten out of ten. It's so mathematical. It's oh, so shit. funny. Also, a nine. <laughs> My God, one of the girls is a nine, and the other one's a nine point two five, and I'm sort of un- 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 unable to differentiate between and, the two. Oh, my friend is fucking all five of them. <laughs> oh shit! I was too busy ranking them. <laughs> You're too busy rating everyone out of ten. You're a zero, loser. <laughs> Whoa, oh, dude. sorry. I'm, I was looking I, in a mirror when I said that. It, I feel like this is a, uh, a rite of passage almost for like, it's so not an actual problem, but you get so hung up on it when you're single and you're a dude and you're like, well, it's exciting chasing after girls. It's exciting to make it a problem. Right. Because you're thinking about it all the time. And the only way to warrant the amount of uh, space in your brain that it's occupying is to make it sort of like a conundrum that you have to solve. Yeah. But like really what you want, what your question is, is like, Two girls like me. Two girls like me. This one's hot. This one's hotter. This one's hot. They're going to come to a party. Two girls like me. Hooray! <laughs> it doesn't, you don't actually need to decide anything. Yet. Of course not. It's fine. But I do, I think that like, I used to do this all the time as well. Just be like, do I like this girl? Do I like this girl? But it was only that I liked thinking about girls. It right. wasn't that like, I actually needed to decide who who yeah, I like. Do you ever have that thing where you're like, there's these two attractive friends that are both equally into me and I have to choose one and the other will be alienated forever? That doesn't exist. But you know what else I don't think exists? I don't think anybody ever sits down and weighs all the options and makes an educated decision about which person they're going to be more attracted to. I think you just like to think about it. So it just comes up. You just are you'll find yourself being yeah, attracted. You can't like talk yourself into or out of being attracted to someone. So if he's like, I like this 8.5, a 10 likes me, and I don't know which one I like, who should I decide? These are the pros, these are the cons. Yeah. All he's really enjoying is that it's happening. Right. And then when the party's taking place, that's when you'll know who you're attracted to because you'll be like, I want to talk to this girl. I mean, this is good. I mean, it is a fun problem to have. I was just joking, calling him a zero. I mean, this guy's sort of like me in a way. He's just super uh, neurotic and analytical about any any specific problem that I think comes he's to like him. every person, though. Every, every, every guy I've ever met. Right. Just so like, all right, in two weeks, I'm going to have a party, and one of them is a, is a this, and the other one is a that, and how do I make sure that there are three options, all right? There are three options. And I have to choose which one. Why don't you the fun of having a party is <laughs> planning for it, which actually, which completely means nothing. Why don't you just go to the party without anything in your mind and see what happens? Right. It's, That's like one of the advice someone, I think it was Milana on our show. She's like, the best thing you can do on a date is not think about how it's going to end. Just enjoy the moment. Because if you're thinking about the end, it's like, ooh, should I kiss? Should I hug? Should I handshake? Should I do this? Should I do that? Should yeah. I do the other? Why don't you just enjoy what's happening currently and then see what happens? If one of the opportunities should present themselves, whether it's with one girl or the other, I say go for it. Because the hardest thing go to do is it. actually, yeah, I mean, you already wrote for it, so figure it out. Like, let's say I wouldn't, I wouldn't turn getting a girl I wouldn't turn down for what yeah i wouldn't turn down for whom <laughs> getting a lady or a guy is a very difficult thing to do it doesn't happen often in your life even if you do it a lot it's a small percentage of your life that's true like let's say you sleep with a hundred girls which is a ton or a hundred guys that's still like five percent of 
a, a, a given decade. Of course, I haven't done any of that math at all, so I Neither, can't really. Yeah, I couldn't understand. I mean, a hundred out of three thousand, let's say three thousand days, you sleep with a hundred girls. That seems like a lot, but it's only like one in every thirty, three hundred, one in every three hundred. <laughs> See, this is what happens when I drink. <laughs> it's a small percentage of your day. It's a special. You moment. don't want to find out uh, th- how many days in a day. Oh my god! All right, I'm gonna do the math right here. This is why my number is lower than 100. <laughs> so 365 days. Yeah, you're doing you're doing the math for my number. <laughs> yeah. So there's 3,650 days in a decade. Let's say you have sex 200 of those days, which is a lot. I don't even know if it's a lot because you have a girlfriend, you have, you have sex many. Okay, how about what if you don't have a girlfriend? So let's they, say a hundred times don't you have count a, towards the number. A hundred times you have. <laughs> well, they count once. They count once. A hundred times you have sex with a, a girl for the first time. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. First okay. time having sex for the first time is very excited. It happens once every. Uh, so let's say there's 365 days, and you do it a hundred times. So that's once every. This is if you Wait, sleep. this is 100 people in a year? 100 people in a decade. Oh, in a decade? Yeah. It happens once every month in a week, five weeks. So it's a special thing. It's not yeah. like food where you have it every day, and it's not like this weekend, which happens once a week. It happens every five weeks if you're, if you're doing it very, very well. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is that when, it's so special when it's happening that I wouldn't be like, uh, I'll pass on this one and see if something else develops. I would say just go for it. Oh, interesting. Because, I mean, and 100... You, made, you did a lot of work to make it not interesting with all the calculating. But <laughs> In a perfect world, I could have gotten to that number in my head. Yeah. This, this calculator that you see has to be in my, in my brain. <laughs> this can't be here. On the computer. <laughs> on the computer, absolutely. This computer should hey, be buddy, between I, my eyes. I'll finish your drink for you. Okay? I'm okay without it. I'm okay without it. All right, hand it over. Let go. Hey! <laughs> I'm biting your hand. Uh, the advice is to relax and go for it. I don't know what else to say other than that. I think, yeah, that's perfect. Relax and go for it. Let's see what happens. Can you let us know what happened? Yeah. Uh, we'll reply to this email so that you know we talked about it, and then you can let us know what happened. Uh, all right, let's take Please. a break. We'll be back with more after this. Thank you as well to TrunkClub.com for sponsoring this episode. TrunkClub.com. It's like a personal stylist. That sounds pretty unique and convenient. <laughs> you just woke up and you said that. You didn't even know what I was talking about. Yeah, I was having a dream right. where I could buy my clothes <laughs> online rather than having to go to a store. That's right. What is Trunk Club? Basically, it assigns you a personal stylist. So you just say what kind of look you want what kind of style and size and they assign a real person to help style you it's about if the look i want is awesome and the style i want is cool they can do that they yeah they email you a list of clothes they recommend sending you you approve and at no cost to you they'll ship a full trunk of fresh clothes you try them on you keep what you want and send back what you don't in a prepaid box that's it that's pretty it's pretty cool and we've actually used trunk club we're not just saying whatever because they gave us money. Okay? And how did it work? Uh, it was, well, frankly, just, <laughs> it was great. It really, really was. That's right. They, they send you a whole ton of clothes that you wouldn't think to buy for yourself. You don't have to go shopping. It's basically like having, it's, it's as if you're really wealthy and you paid someone to go shopping for you, send you the clothes, and then you just ship back what you don't like. Actually, we're here. We're on vacation right now, and I brought one of the sweaters I got from Trunk Club. It's a, um, I don't know what the brand is, but it's like a really soft crew neck sweater that has a pocket as if it's a hoodie. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty nice. So these are the types of things we're talking about, people. If this service interests you, by the way, did we mention it's free? The stylist, the shipping, uh, the shopping, it's all free. You only pay for the clothes you keep. If this service interests you, check out trunkclub.com slash if I were you. You know, like the name of our show. Trunkclub.com slash if I were you. Easy enough. We used it, and we loved it. Uh, I wanted to say real quickly, thank you as well to prosper.com. Let's face it, there aren't many good ways to borrow money when you need it. Friends, family, credit card companies, and traditional bank loans, you have to pick your poison, but now with a low-rate fixed loan for prosper.com, there is a better way. 
You can borrow up to $35,000 in a few five days and use the money for just about anything you desire. You can pay off a high-rate credit card, fix up the house, and even put it into your business. Prosper's online marketplace connects people who need money with those who want to invest in you. So don't rack up more debt on your credit cards. Pay them off with Prosper to check out your low rate instantly without affecting your good credit. Go to Prosper.com slash if I were you. And now, for a limited time, listeners to this show get a $50 Visa prepaid, prepaid gift card with your low interest loan. That's up to $35,000 in as few as five days. And just to sweeten the pot a little bit, a $50 Visa prepaid gift card. Go to prosper.com slash if I were you. That's prosper.com slash if I were you. Now, let's get back to the show. Recording this episode on a Saturday in May. By the time you hear it, we are in Australia. We'll be there. We'll be there. We'll be in Melbourne on the way to Adelaide for our first show. This episode comes out on Monday, June 8th. Our first show is Tuesday, June 9th in Adelaide. Oh, wow. So there's still time to promote the Adelaide show. That's right. This is it. The Adelaide show is tomorrow. If you're listening to this on Monday, June 8th. We'll have already taken the 15-hour flight. Yeah. I'm not looking forward to that. That's the worst part about traveling is the actual traveling. I don't... I don't... I mean, it's not like I love flying. Right. But I don't find it so abhorrent that it would it's not even like i'm not even thinking about it oh i'm thinking about it and it's not a scare thing it's just a boredom thing 15 hours on a on a seat so you're you're like actively i'm dreading this flight i'm like i don't know what i'm gonna do on it i'm gonna download mad men episodes and watch it i don't know if i should bring a sleeping pill i don't know if i should do this all of the above but (laughs) i'm gonna i'm gonna Ride on the plane. Yeah. You and I are going to, we're going to work on our script okay. for a little bit till midnight. That'd be nice. Then I'm going to pop a pill. Uh-huh. I'm going to sleep until, you know, whenever. Uh-huh. Of course, because time is sort of weird when you're flying across the international dateline. Probably sleep for at least six hours. Okay. Let's That's say. solid. And then I wake up and what? There's like, then I, I, you sort of wake up and you're like, okay, now this is like a trip a, to in New LA York. to New York trip. Right. Like six Which hours. Left. I can handle that. Right. All you have to do is. Work a little, sleep a little, wake up, and then it's like Watch a, a five-hour trip. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. guess that's, that's good. You're right. All right. I'll go to Australia. Oh, thank God. Our show's tomorrow in Adelaide. <laughs> uh, to- Tuesday in Adelaide. Uh, sh- tickets are still available as of now. Sydney, or sorry, the day after we're in Melbourne. That show is sold out. Sorry, babies. I think Melbourne's going to be uh, pop popping off because those are all people that got tickets before the entire show sold out. 800 people. Yeah. Uh, Sydney on Wednesday, June 11th, Brisbane on Thursday, June 12th, and then, uh, sorry, Friday, June 12th, and then the last show is Perth on Sunday, June 14th. Tickets still available. Streeter is going to be there, too. Uh, we're excited. I don't know about you guys, but I'm just excited to hang out with Streeter again. Yeah. Um, I'm not even thinking about the shows. I'm thinking about, like, after the shows and asking people to take us to whatever place uh, people rage at in Perth on a Tuesday. Or, oh, that'd be nice. Or yeah, a Sunday whenever our show is. It's it's half a show and then half a party. Yeah, we're relying on people to take us out. That's too. right. So we basically we need you to come. Please it's not, come. Yeah, if you're on the fence and you're like, oh, I actually know some cool places. We actually need you to arrive. Yeah. Wait for us until after the show. And we then- appreciate the money you'll spend on us, but we really actually mostly appreciate your guidance. Of course. We need friends. And I know what you guys are thinking. I don't want to hang out with those two guys. They haven't gotten a haircut recently. Like we said, we did get a haircut today. We are looking fresh to death. We're cut. I'm actually going to be borrowing my roommate's uh, bomber jacket. <laughs> well, you don't know. I think I'll be borrowing Marty's bomber jacket. <laughs> All right. If y'all see me in a bomber jacket, yeah. you'll know I borrowed it. Uh, another, <laughs> But I own it. And it, Wait, no. So don't. you didn't borrow it. I didn't borrow it. Uh, another update in our lives is that uh, by the time this episode comes out, we will be homeless. We did not get, we did not, we did not acquire, we were not presented with the opportunity to to enter Raven Nest. Yeah. Nor do we deserve to be entering Raven Nest. We made an offer. The offer was so low, the owners did not even humor us with a counter. They they didn't even laugh at us. So, <laughs> they stared at us blankly. Of course, laughing would be acknowledging it. We floated down onto their feet like a leaf, and they didn't have to do anything about we it. We grasped for the ark and stone. Mm-hmm. And what did we receive? <laughs> we received nothing but ash. <laughs> Coal and ash. For it, that is what we deserve, and that is what we are. <laughs> in the shadow of Raven Nest. 
Uh, so that 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 home, sorry, that her glory haven, be, that her haven, glory be, her, absolutely, praise her be to her, uh, will exist only in that one visit to us, only in our mind's eye. And I'm not 100 percent sure we ever were there. Explain that. I think <laughs> you and I died at death. I think we died at death, <laughs> and I think Raven Nest. It was purgatory. I can't imagine. To show us what we could have, <laughs> to show us what there was, and then to show us what we are and who we'll never be. How much good have we done on this limited time on Earth for us to have died and, and seen the light of Raven Nest? Yeah. I feel saintly for that. I for feel... only the, a few such important special souls. To pull at the sword of Excalibur. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Although, the sword in the stone <laughs> Though we couldn't to, remove it To have the opportunity <laughs> to grasp the handle And to yank at the blade To touch the stone To touch the stone To see the stone To be considered Is an honor <laughs> It was an honor To be before her gate To listen to the siren's song And then we did try to bed the <laughs> siren But she would not She would not give herself to of us Of course Nor do we deserve it oh. we, we offered so little for what you, what can Did you? Did I ever offer? tell you I shit in the driveway there? What? <laughs> I shit in the driveway <laughs> on the way out. I swear to Jesus, when I turned around and saw that turd, it was nothing but three Cadbury eggs, <laughs> uniformly placed, stacked on top of each other. For that is the power of Raven Nest, <laughs> and it and it is deserved, and it is so. Let us never ever speak of it again, for it is unspeakable. To, to Raven Nest. Nest. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's get to one last question. We gotta, we gotta hop aboard this flight. Who? Um, I drank two whiskeys in the time that you have not drank one. Yeah, about so, half. All right, you want to read this question while I while you finish that? Yeah, while you finish that, baby. The fake name I'll give this person is it a lady? Uh, no, good. It is not. And I will give this gentleman the fake name of uh, Smort. S hyphen. Sorry, S apostrophe. Mm-hmm. Lowercase S apostrophe. Like, M-O-R-T. He loves s'mores. His name was Mort. <laughs> he loves He went on one camping trip. Yeah. <laughs> he had it. Honestly, he only had two s'mores, but everyone else had one. <laughs> Some and people they, had two. Yep. <laughs> Much he had three. three. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Smort. S- Smortimer writes. Smort writes. Hey, Jake and Amir. Me and my friends all go to different unis, but we always meet up at the holidays to catch up and hang out. The problem is, one of my friends always brings his sister along without asking. This wouldn't be so bad, except this dame is a stone-cold bitch. She is really mean and distant to everyone, and keeps messing up the group dynamic by getting off with or fucking the guys in the group. We've talked about it, and none of us want her there. But it's got to the point where the only way we can avoid her is by not inviting our friends to stuff. How can we politely tell this guy that his sister is not welcome without it being awkward? Thanks for your help. Samort. I don't know about this chick, you guys. She blew Daryl, fucked Michael. She fucked David. I feel like she fucked everyone except for me at this point. (laughs) She's actually a stone-cold bitch. He's such a bitch. Because she's, like, fucking with the dynamic. <laughs> she's boning. She, like, is hooking up with all our friends. So, Not me, of course, but all of everybody else. So raise your hand if you fu- Okay, see how it's everyone so, but me. And you, nobody even freaking likes her except for me. Or I did. I might. No, I, I don't like her. As I a, just... I'm I'm curious as all to fuck... Because you all did it, and you all liked it. So I say, I, for one, either cast her away, and we never hang out with her, or... I get to have sex with her and make her my girlfriend, and you guys never allowed to touch her ever again because she's uh, with me. She is not a bitch. <laughs> uh, we, I don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We just don't know. Uh, so it like, is... even if everybody else does agree with this guy, and they're like, "We want her out, man. She's fucking up the group dynamic. She's hooking up with us." <laughs> She's not doing it by herself. You're hooking up with her. Yeah. it's She's screwing it up because of you. You can't, like, hook up with her and then say, God, you <laughs> fucked up the dynamic. <laughs> you mean? What is the dynamic of this group that... <laughs> 
Doesn't that seem like a thing a girl can do is like threaten to sleep with all your friends? Yeah. Like if a girl, if you were dating a girl and she was kind of crazy. Right. And then you're like, I think we have to break up. And then she's like, if you break up with me, I'm going to fuck all of your friends. If I was dating a girl and she was like, all right, I'm going to blow a mirror. <laughs> I think I would probably, if she was like, I'm going to, if you break up with me, I'm going to suck a mirror's dick. But not just me. It would be like me, Dave, Jeff. Like, okay, I'm going to suck every single guy's dick that you know. <laughs> and you could be like, I'm going to tell them not to, but odds are they wouldn't care. Well, odds are definitely Dave's doing it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dave's already going. Well, they, actually, Dave's married at this point. Oh, okay. So besides Dave or Dave three years ago. Especially if she did it in like a really cool, even-tempered way. Not like, well, I'm going to fucking blow all your friends. But right. like, well, they're not going to do it if you seem this unstable. She's like, then I'm going to blow your friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can con them. I'll tell them I need to talk, that I want to get over you, and I just want to like go out and get a drink with somebody, and then we'll get to drinking, and I'll touch their leg. They'll think, oh, wait, what is this? And then, you know, of course, if I just want to blow them, they're right. gonna, you know your friends. They'll <laughs> let me. I would be really afraid. <laughs> I would be fearful, I think. I would but be then I would, scared. I might be scared that she would do it anyway. <laughs> so you might as well end ties and hope for the best. Be like, all right, do whatever you want. I can't. I can't deal with this. Yeah, that's a completely different issue. I don't even know why that came up. A girl. Yeah, no, girls could easily wreak havoc. Yeah, they are on a group of guy friends. If girls uh, just men use... are so jealous and so horny. <laughs> They're so jealous and horny. We can't stress that enough. The two and worst it, things you can be are like, I'm super horny and super jealous. So I'll be angry and also want a nut. I want to come and yell. I love the idea of coming and none of my fucking friends get to. <laughs> Only I do. Life is a competition. And then we talk about it and celebrate me because I came the hardest and the most and for the most people and in the most people and with the most people. Yeah. I borderline had sex once every 36 and a half days, and nobody's given me the attaboy. Nobody's given me the I definitely didn't gaps. do it because it felt good. I no. did it because my <laughs> friends would be impressed. Uh, what can you do? What would you do? What would you do? To get rid of a sister. Could you stop inviting a guy? Isn't it easier to just tell him not to invite his sister? I guess the easiest thing would be to uh, tell him that his sister is hooking up with all your friends. Yeah, you don't want... A guy wouldn't be, like, down... I don't have a sister, so I don't really get that, like... When your sister is dating a guy, are you, like, a dad? Are you protective? Are you, like, okay? What? How does it work if you're a brother? Know. I had to, like, go through a transformation with my sisters because when I was younger, it was, like, no one's allowed to touch them. You know, I was a protective older brother. Like, I don't want a guy talking to my sisters. I don't want any of my friends looking at my sisters. <laughs> And then you like you get older and you realize that people like to be touched and have orgasms and you you don't want to deprive your sisters of that happiness. I don't like to think about it happening, but I would obviously want everybody that I love and care about to feel good in every possible way and sexually uh sex is a way that you feel good and I want them to have fulfilling sex lives. But <laughs> then you, you don't think about like hey don't touch my fucking sister. It's just like hey don't uh don't be an asshole to her. Yeah, that don't kind of be thing. mean. Yeah. So I'm sure if you told this guy that his sister was sleeping with all of your friends, he would want... There's not a lot of brothers who are like, yeah, I don't care. Have at her. Yeah, but then like, then he, this guy, the tattletale's fucking with the dynamic. Also, like, What is he going to say? She's fucking everybody but me, dude. <laughs> She's fuck Yeah, she blew him, fucked him, made out with him, and... I'm getting like jack shit, and you think that's fair? Do you think it's because my name is Smart? I mean, I don't even know how to, how to <laughs> rationalize this. One and a half s'mores. <laughs> s'mores. Uh, is there a better... So you're saying don't tell the guy that his sister is hooking up? No, well, because if you're worried about the friend dynamic, that's certainly going to fuck with it. If you're like, hey, all of your friends are boning your sister. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the kind of guy who's like, let me bring my sister around <laughs> with all of my dude friends. You wouldn't do that. I would bring... Uh, yeah, no. I don't think I would at all. You, would you bring any girl to a guy's night or especially not a sister? How does that work? Female friend? Uh, yeah, I probably... I mean... I don't know. I guess... Do we have, like, guys' nights? Uh, sometimes we hang out dudes. But I feel like that's never, like, a conscious decision. Like, hey... 
tonight's guys night. Right. It's just like we're mostly friends with guys. <laughs> every guy, every night of ours is guys night by default. Yeah. Every night is just like, hey, let's hang out with our friends, and then we know four guys. That yeah. Are friends. <laughs> That's our guy's night. So what would you tell this guy is to do? Uh, to, I think he is way too focused on this sister. It's fine that she's there. Yeah, and if it bothers you a lot, I guess you can talk to him about it. But what a weird thing to so. say. Don't bring your sister around. People, I don't like people that are like so focused on it, like keeping a certain dynamic. Right. You have to just, there's an ebb and a flow and an evolution. and like. But I can imagine you getting mad at like, a guy that you don't like constantly being there. You're like, why do we hang out with this dude? I don't like this guy. Yeah, but He's I was like never ruining say my like, night. But not like to not bring him. So say we hung out with this guy, a guy that we really liked. And every time he was around, he brought another guy that we all really Didn't despised. Like. I don't... Hmm. Does this actually happen ever? Because that would help me uh, channel my emotions. Uh, I don't know. But sooner or later, you would just like... You would you in your mind you would group those two guys. You're like, I don't like these two guys here. So it's like almost like it, it negatively his his badness uh, is contagious, and it's like he's infected this good guy. Now it's like I don't like these two guys because it contains fifty percent that guy. Interesting. It's like I, how I don't like chocolate vanilla swirl ice cream because I don't like chocolate. <laughs> Suddenly I'm not eating vanilla anymore. <laughs> I mean, how is that right? You did finally finish your whiskey, so I understand why you're crying. <laughs> and it does look like chocolate at this point. I think the last time we did a drunk podcast like on our, on our own, not at a live show, we got way more wasted. I'm pretty drunk. Are you? Yeah. Good man. We're going to go out? <laughs> Dude, are you kidding me? Bottoms up. Uh, what's your last bit of advice for this guy just so we can end this episode? Here's what I think. You're never going to get the same group of friends that you have that you want back. He's not, you're not going to get this restoration to the old group dynamic. Right. You might as well embrace that this girl's there. Or sorry, not embrace it, but just ignore that she's there. Oh, Talk to your other friends. You won't. Maybe you're not going to have like a big gr- guy group thing. At least not with your manipulating it. You're not. It might just happen organically. It's going to happen naturally. But just try not to be such a little bitch about it. Excuse me. <laughs> of course. And talk to your other friends and don't talk to the stone, the stone cold ice queen. Yeah. Also. I do think you like her. <laughs> that being said, I feel like if she slept with you and not your friends, it wouldn't be an issue. And except for that it would because then you would be like, oh, I love this girl and all of my friends fucked her. So what you should do is ask this girl out. No, Either kick her out or ask her out. There you go. Either way, I'm blind. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, all right. That's it. That's our episode. Come see us in Australia if you, if you are in Australia and you haven't bought tickets yet. How fucking crazy is that? We're going to be there. We're there right now if you're listening to this. Uh, the opening theme song was written by Colin. Colin, I don't know if we ever said thank you. So thank you, Colin. Uh, if you have your own questions or your own theme song submissions, go uh, email if I were you show at gmail.com. Come. We also need thumbnail submissions. You know, every time we upload our podcast to Facebook, we use original artwork created by you, our talented fans. Uh, once again, the opening theme song was written by Colin, and this closing one was written by Ethan, whose band uh, is called Dead Arcade, and they have a SoundCloud page. So if you go to soundcloud.com slash deadarcade, you can listen to more from Ethan. And here's a little bit right now. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll be back on Monday. Bye. I've got some problems. You help to solve them. What would you do? I've got some issues for these two Jews to help me get through. They said, go to Starbucks. Say you do you. Enter the nightclubs. All the crew cracked to quit. You don't give a shit. Looks like you're fun, fun. Today was all about you, but tonight's about me. Me, me, me. Hit me on Tinder, told I don't text her. I'm a piece of that guard. You need help and you know what to do. If I were you, so at gmail.com.